This is a great scrap wood project. You probably don't need to go out and buy any lumber for it. I suggest using hardwood rather than softwood. This is a piece of cherry. I'll start by working on the spine. I'll first cut it to its width. I might as well cut out a couple of these so I have one to test with. I need to make this board a little bit thinner, so I need to raise my blade up a little higher than the width of that board. About there. I'm gonna set up my gripper to assist with this cut. First thing I need to do is move this middle one over out of the way. This one's gonna hold the workpiece in place, but I need to keep this from tipping over, and that's what this thing here is. It'll slide down like that, and then I can lock it in place. I'm also gonna attach this sacrificial cleat to the back of this gripper just to help push that board through a little bit better. And that'll ride back here on the board. I'm gonna use my crosscut sled to cut out the middle parts of that spine. So the reason why I wanna use this instead of my miter gauge is that I can control this small piece of wood on both sides of the cut. I want to set my blade at 3 8 of an inch high. I'm going to use one of these little setup blocks. I mean, you could just measure it just as easily with a tape measure. So basically what I want to do here is cut out a big dado in the center section of this spine. It's going to start 3 8 of an inch over on each end and then this whole center area will get cut out to that three-eighths or yeah three-eighths inch depth that I set that saw blade at. So in order to do that I just need to set up a stop block. I could set it up on either side here but I'll set it up here and set it up to where this side will be three-eighths of an inch from the blade. My first setup will be just slightly shy of that 3 8 inch so that I can sneak up on it. So about there. And I'll just clamp this stop block into place. This is a perfect reason to make yourself a crosscut sled if you don't already have one. This small piece is just so much safer with a sled since the work piece stays stationary through the whole cut and there's no friction against the table. Plus the Sled's base has a zero clearance slot for the saw blade, so you'll just get a cleaner cut. There's a lot of different uses for a crosscut sled, and there's a lot of different crosscut sled designs on YouTube, but I think this one is by far the easiest to build and the most practical. Be sure to check out my how to video if you want to make one. I want the outside of this spine to have a little bit of a curve to it, just like a regular book spine. So I'm just gonna make a mark here where I want that curve to end up. I'm gonna shape this using my disc sander. If you don't have one of these, a uh, random orbit sander works fine. It's not a lot of material to remove. And that's all the curve I'm looking for on that spine. And I need to round over these tabs a little bit so that the cover can open and close. I'll probably need to refine that a little bit more once I start to assemble this. I need to make the book covers much thinner than this three quarter inch wood. One way to do that would be to use a thickness planer, but that would waste a lot of wood. So typically you'd want to resaw this board. In other words, slice it this way into two thinner boards. 
A uh, bandsaw would be the most common tool for this job, but if you're like me and you don't have a bandsaw, you can resaw with a table saw. I mean, I already did that earlier to thin down the spine, but cutting a wide board like this poses more challenges, especially if you want to do it safely, which presumably you do. But it doesn't have to be intimidating. You just need to think through the setup and how the board is going to be supported through the entire cut. You need to keep the board from tipping and you need to keep your fingers well away from the blade. With my blade raised as high as it'll go, it's still not even close to being able to cut through this entire board, but it's more than halfway, so I should be able to cut halfway through this board and then flip it around and cut through the other way. The first thing I need to do is remove this throat plate because this gap is just too wide there that this board can fall into that. Hey, what was that doing in there? This is my zero clearance insert plate. It's got a slot that's the same thickness as the blade. The only problem here is that I won't be able to raise this blade all the way up and keep my riving knife in place. So I'm gonna need to remove that for this cut. Next, I need my rip fence to be higher to support the full width of this board so it's not so tippy. First thing I'll do is attach this sacrificial fence. This is one I've had around for a long time. It's just got holes drilled in the side of this piece of plywood and then I've got these kind of clamps here that hold it to my rip fence. Now what I can do is take this wider board and screw it to that board. And in order for my workpiece to travel along here smoothly, I need to make sure that this is square. And right now, it's not quite square to my table. I can see a gap up here on this top part. So what I could do is just shim this up a little bit. So I'll loosen that. I've got these little scraps of wood that I cut off of that spline earlier, so I can just kind of wedge those into place. That looks pretty good. Now I can move this fence over to the actual size of the cut I want to make. Next, I want to set up a feather board. This is going to apply pressure against the board as it's going into the blade and keep it pressed against the rip fence. So I'll just set it up right back here. What you don't want to do is set up a feather board up here alongside of the blade because that would just press your workpiece and the cutoff piece into the blade. So what this does is this keeps it moving forward and it won't come back. Now in order to run the board through the blade, I'm gonna use a push stick on this side of the board to keep it pressed against the fence. And then I'm gonna use this push block. It's also got a cleat on the back that'll help push it through the blade this way. So this push block is gonna provide pressure downward and forward. The push stick is gonna keep it against the fence. Also, depending on how powerful your saw is, you probably won't be able to cut through that much material all at once. So I'm gonna lower it down to about there. If you have a blade dedicated to making rip cuts, it'd be good to install that. That means it would just have bigger gullets in here for the sawdust to come out. And it would have fewer teeth. But this is a general purpose blade, which works pretty well here. Just take it slowly. Don't try to force the wood.
Notice also how I've got my body positioned to the side of the blade, not directly in front of it. The whole key to this is not forcing the wood through the blade. Take it slowly and don't try to cut too much all at once. And that's all there is to resawing wide boards. I need to cut a notch in two corners of each of the book covers so that they can fit into this part of the spine. I'll use my crosscut sled to cut out those notches, but I need to remove this safety guard first. So I can set up a stop block over here to cut out that much. This will give you an idea of how this is all going to go together. So this back cover will get glued into place and this front cover will go in here like this and then swing open. In order for this to swing open, I need to round over this edge. This will be the trickiest part of the entire project. It's gonna be, the cover is gonna go on here like this and swing open. So I need to drill a hole through here and into there that the dowel can go through and act as a hinge. So to do that, I can just set this down like this and then I can clamp this in place. I've already found what I'm pretty sure is the center point there and I've just made a divot using an awl. And I've got a brad point bit. Now it's just a matter of getting this as straight in there as possible. I've also put a piece of masking tape here to flag it so I know how far I want to go. I'll stop when I get to that point. All right, now I'm gonna hold this in place with this dowel. But I'm gonna leave this extra long here so that I can remove this. And this is where it's probably gonna need some fine tuning, let's see. So where this is hitting is on this side of the shoulder. And I even mentioned this in the plans that you're gonna to have to cut this shoulder a little bit deeper, but it's such a small amount that I think I could just sand it out a little bit. All right, it looks like now the only sticking point is this inside round over on the cover. Yeah, that'll work. One thing I wanted to be mindful of was that when this cover opens or the box lid opens, it goes back a little bit more than a 90 degree angle so that when you open the lid, it won't just close back down. It has a positive stop back there. I'm gonna use maple for the inner box just to give that cherry some contrast and so the edges of it sort of look like pages in a book. I'm just gonna rip this board down to its square. I'm gonna use my miter sled to cut out these miter joints. 
Of course, there's a lot of different ways to cut miters. You could use a miter saw or just use your miter gauge on your table saw. I like to use this miter sled because it always gives me perfect results. I'm gonna cut this down to a smaller size once it's assembled. I just think this will be a lot easier to glue this up with these sort of thick boards. By the way, if you don't have one of these strap clamps, just wrap a few rubber bands around this. That'll work just as well. With that dry, now what I can do is cut it down so that it fits within this spine. So somewhere around in here. I just want this inside part to look a little less chunky. Here's what that'll look like. I've cut these three sides about the same thickness. Looks like this one's a little bit fatter, but it doesn't really matter. And it fits in there. I've kept this side a little bit wider. All of these dimensions will be in the plans. Most likely you'll run into a sticking point here when you try to pull this open because this piece here is preventing it from opening all the way. It's not too much of a problem here, but it more than likely will be. So what I need to do is cut a chamfer along this edge. So I'll tip my blade to a 45 degree angle or close to it, doesn't have to be exact. Now that can fit in there like that, and it should have enough clearance. I'll use my router to make a small chamfer around the edges of that inside box. And I'll slightly round over the edges of the book covers. I sanded everything down nice and smooth. Now I can glue this to the cover. And I wanna make sure I glue this part to the spine, like this. Whoop! Uh-oh, it's got glue all over everything. And the front cover, too. <laughs> ah. That turned out a little trickier to glue up than I thought because I really wanted this spline to meet up flush with this back cover. So that's why I had to use this clamp, which was hard to get on there because of its the rounded spine, but it seems to grab that rubber band okay. And then I've gotta have enough pressure holding this down and then this this way. So anyways, just creative clamping, I guess. I'm gonna use a couple of rare earth magnets as a latch, and I picked up a couple different sizes. This is the first one. This is a three millimeter Molly blah 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 magnet. I ran a couple of tests, but I think this is just too tiny and won't be quite strong enough for this wood, but it's kind of fun to play with. This is a five millimeter magnet, which I think will work out a little bit better. So I'll try to drill a real shallow hole. Now I just need to determine where that magnet is gonna line up with the magnet on the cover. And I think what I'm gonna do is use this little nail, it's like a brad. And I think I'll cut the head off of it. And then I just kinda of plop it in that center hole where the bit went.
Yeah, and I've got a divot right there. I'm gonna hold these in place with some epoxy. So this is just five minute epoxy. This isn't the kind of epoxy you use to make river tables. <laughs> I made a mark on one side of this magnet so I would know which way it goes so that it'll connect with the other one. I'll finish this with some spray lacquer. I'm lining the inside of the box with felt. I'll attach it using spray adhesive. I'm applying some paste finishing wax to these dowel pins before I stick them in. This will just help them hinge a little bit easier. No squeaking. And I might as well apply that finishing wax to the rest of the project. <laughs> <laughs> 